Welcome to Wildlife Outdoors with your host, Russell and Jose. If you have a passion for conservation of the outdoors, or you're enjoying a calming hike in the mountains, an exhilarating kayak trip on the river, feeling a fish on the end of your line, cooking on an open flame in a primitive campsite, or stalking big game, just waiting for the perfect shot, you're in the right place. So put on your boots and polarized sunglasses and come along for the ride. Welcome back to another episode of Wildlife Outdoors. We have another exciting episode for you guys today, and today we got a twofer. We got two guys joining us from the Northwest Arkansas chapter of Real Recovery. So today we got Toby and Bob. How y'all doing today? I'm great. Thanks for having us. Hey, of course. I'm happy to have y'all. This is uh, something that I've been wanting to kind of get involved with for a while, um fun fact there's another podcast that we're friends with down in texas and they did a benefit for the real recovery chapter down there in in central texas and um i really didn't know much about real recovery up to that point and so we donated a couple stuff from our podcast and went down to their benefit and it was a really good time they had like this um iron chef type competition for tying flies and it was just real fun um but i didn't know much about real recovery up to that point and they made a video and they played it at that event, and I was just like, oh, my goodness. Like, I don't think there was a dry eye in the room whenever it got done. And uh, ever since then, I was like, I need to be involved. And so um, I'm just kind of happy that this is kind of finally happening. So I appreciate y'all spending y'all's time with me tonight. We appreciate you. Hey, of course, of course. Um, so our, I know that y'all are both involved in real recovery. What are, what are y'all's, I guess, responsibilities? Um. I guess I'm the the state coordinator for Arkansas and Toby's the river buddy coordinator. Mm -hmm. Mainly it's us two. And then we have a group of core river buddies that actually some of them have been volunteering longer than I have. Oh, wow. And uh, so we have a solid core of river buddies that makes it easy to hold up the retreats. So, I have a few points that I want to hit, but I guess the first thing that we could do is just talk about real recovery. And, you know, if y'all could give me a, a good description and give the listeners a good description of what real recovery is and what the mission is. It's uh, a support, I guess, retreat for male cancer survivors of any cancer okay. and uh, any stage. So you could have had it you know, six months old, cured by one year old, you qualify. Uh, or you could be going through chemo right now. Uh, the only requirements is uh, over 21, mm-hmm. uh, a male, and get your doctor's permission. And we'll cover probably more later on, but our biggest uh hurdle is actually getting men to sign up for a free fly fishing retreat. Yeah. So, uh, it's open. So Arkansas, we're one of the later retreats. So you can come as long as you can make it to flip in Arkansas. Uh, we'd love to have you. So it's open, you know, countrywide to come to Arkansas. They prefer you to stay within your state. We don't want people driving all over the place but we've had people as as far as chicago we have another guy coming from illinois this year oh wow and uh we had a guy from actually from california but then he double booked his vacation so he was gonna you know a lot of people have relatives here so they kind of do a family visit and combine the retreat and the white river has such reputation for you know as a destination river yeah that helps a little bit too with people from the out of the area, say, I want to catch one of those big browns in the white. Right. Because you open any fly fishing magazine, you're going to see some article about the White River and the browns here. Yeah. Absolutely. So what they've what they've discovered is uh, getting outdoors, actually getting in a river, and fly fishing just requires enough concentration that you forget about everything else, but you're just not you know, getting a headache because you're so concentrated. It just kind of puts you in a nice, relaxed state. So, you know, there's, you know, Project Healing Water for Veterans, Casting for Recovery for Women, Breast Cancer Survivors. A lot of, a lot of uh, people are taking advantage of the therapy of fly fishing. 
Yeah. So that's what we're doing. Um, and it's kind of the hook to get people to show up and yeah. no experience, experience uh, necessary. So the river buddies are basically your guide for the day and a half here on the river. And they're there to, you know, help you f- fish. They're also there to talk to if you're, you know, want to take need to take a break. They're more than happy to go on the shore. The participant dictates the the pace, and then and then we have a facilitator. After each meal, uh, the group will get together and kind of discuss a, a, a basically a question. And uh, but if they don't want to participate, they're happy to just say pass and and uh, go on with that. I see. So it's a very relaxed. That's awesome. So, so is it one of those things to where you come, you stay for a few days, you fish, you talk? Like, is there anything special other than that? Because that in its own is special. But I'm just trying to, I guess, kind of wrap my mind around why people might not want to come to a retreat or why they might feel like they don't belong. Or what, what is, what do you guys think is the hang up for people not becoming participants? Well, uh, it's a male thing. It is. Uh, Cancer, you know, I, you know, we, for some reason, males just want to uh, suck it up, yeah, curl up under a tree. Mm-hmm. What happens, happens. Yeah. And then if you survive it, move on. And uh, so that's the hardest part is, and a lot of them say, uh, my my experience was easy. Yeah. Let someone else go in my place. Mm-hmm. But, you know, if everyone says that, then then uh we don't have anyone show we, up we get that a lot um i just lost my brother about a month ago from leukemia as leukemia came back and uh his his i tried to get him to do it for years his thing was he didn't want to talk about it he'd put, put that part of his life behind him. i see and he just said i don't want to you know I, i'm done with that i don't want to deal with that again i don't want to bring it back up right so i mean it's just the way i think guys are wired they're Absolutely. not as open as women aren't yeah it yeah. seems like men aren't as open and we don't want to be defined by something like that. Like exactly. we don't want to burden anybody else. We won't, we don't want to be defined by an ailment. And I a hundred percent get that. Um, you know, we've all been through stuff in life and mm-hmm. we don't want to be defined by that. So I, I can see it, but if there's anybody out there that's listening, just know that that's not the case. Like real recovery is a place where you guys can go and be around like-minded men. And the whole retreat isn't going to be about cancer. The whole retreat is going to be about getting you out there meeting some other people. There are going to be some conversations. They call them uh, courageous conversations. You can absolutely talk about stuff, but the whole retreat isn't focused on that. So there's anybody listening out there that, you know, kind of just feels like they need that little bit of push. It's just a bunch of dudes that have some similarities that are just out there fishing, hanging out, having a good time, eating some meals. And then there's also an, an opening for you to, for you to talk about stuff you're going through with people that are going through the same thing or something similar. So if there's anybody that's on the edge, just take the step and go for it. Absolutely. Yeah. We've, we've had, you know, one extreme to the other. So mm-hmm. the far extreme, uh, it was our, our favorite. It was a young guy, uh, 26, like diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, told he had six months. And his mother was a nurse. Mm-hmm. So I think his mom, so we get a lot of, Women in the men's lives sign them up and tell them they're going. Yeah. And that's it. They put their foot down. So I think that happened in this case. In fact, when uh, uh, the other state coordinator at the time called Nate um, to confirm that he was coming and everything, he was acting like uh, they're trying to sell him a timeshare. What yeah. are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't understand what you're a retreat. You know, I didn't sign up for one. And then sure enough, she drove him there, gave him the boot and said, I'll yeah, pretty much get him out of the car. Yeah. I'll yeah. pick you up in two days. And that first day of fishing, well, the first conversation, you know, he said, pass. I'm not, I didn't sign up for this. I'm not happy. I'm here. He had dark glasses on, this wool cap down to his eyebrows. You couldn't yeah. even see him. And he just said, uh, yeah, 
I'm just going to count the minutes. When my mom shows up, I'm out of here. And we hooked him up with uh, T-Bird. Yeah. I don't know if you ever heard about her. She was That's a different podcast entirely, I promise. Yeah, but anyway, we put the tough ones with her. She can crack their shell. And by lunch, after catching quite a few fish, he really opened up. And then after the retreat, he was, uh, you know, my number one volunteer. We were really? meeting every other day, going yeah. over plans to how to make things bigger. And he wound up surviving five or six years. Oh, wow. Got his high school sweetheart pregnant. He thought he was sterile from all the, all the chemo. And she has a healthy boy. And just crazy how things turned out. That is. And then we've had guys show up where uh, one guy in the group's a veteran, so he's dealing with the VA, can't get to his doctor, you know. Mm-hmm. It's going to take four months. And then we had a country club guy who got prostate cancer, and, you know, he goes to his, ge- his general practitioner, and the guy says, oh, you need to go see this oncologist. Oh, I play golf with him. You know, he's in the next day. Oh, you need to see this specialist. Oh, I play tennis with him. See, you know, he's he's seen all his doctors within the week because he yeah. he knows everyone. And this VA guy's just stuck there waiting and waiting. So he he gave him a bunch of names to to see if he could speed things up, go outside. So it's kind of making connections too. A lot yeah. of them are become fishing buddies. Uh, oh yeah, them come fishing buddies with the. Uh, river buddies uh-huh. so it's a one-time deal you know we don't have repeat customer you know don't let them come back but they can come back a lot of them will come back as river buddies so they'll, see. they'll go out become better fly fishermen and stuff That's and then awesome. come back as uh, river buddies or volunteers so we have a lot of that so some stay connected that's awesome. But to kind of kind of go over just the timeline of a retreat. So we do ours uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, we do it at Cedarwood Lodge. Um, we had a retreat there. Uh, when was that, Toby? I believe two thousand nine. Does that sound right? Uh, maybe that might be a little early. But anyway, somewhere in that area. I think it was. I think it was two thousand nine, maybe two thousand ten. Yeah. Somewhere in that After area. retreat there, they're getting, this is before my time, getting ready to hand them the check, you know, for room and board. And they were so touched, they said, keep it. So really? from here on out, uh, they've given us their facility uh, room and board for free. So really? That, that really eases a huge burden, financial burden from us. Yeah. Now we're, now we're just paying for shipping of waiting waiters insurance Mm -hmm. um and such but so we hold it at cedarwood so everyone arrives monday afternoon around two or three o'clock show them their room get them settled in um we've kind of added uh fly casting Mm -hmm. lessons if the guys if we have a bunch of rookies we uh do casting lessons and then they they're free to do whatever and then uh they get a nice meal cooked by uh, Ken and Mary Ann that own Cedarwood. And then after dinner, we have our first conversation. And that's just basically what's your name, what type of cancer you have. And then after each meal, um, so Tuesday morning is the big fishing day. So we'll have breakfast, do a conversation, and then we head to the river. And depending on uh, the flows, we either fish the white, which is the close Searwood's on the White River. So we'd fish at Cotter would be the closest. But generally the white, except for maybe this year, is generating all the time. So we go to North Fork. I see. And they, they generally have low water more often. Yeah. And actually, we can ask the core. And if it's in power pool and they feel nice. Generous, dude. They, yeah. Yeah. They'll actually turn the tap off for us <laughs> for a certain time or give us a in the middle yeah. of the week also and uh 
But, you know, they always, the power company reserves, you know, if a cold front comes through and there's a peak demand for electricity, then they say, sorry, guys, we got to turn the water on. So, but anyway, those are the two rivers we'll, we'll fish. And uh, between the two of them, we usually can find water that we can fish. Yeah. So then lunch we have on the river, then come back, everyone relaxes, get out of the waiters and all have dinner, then another conversation. And then the same thing, uh, Wednesday, breakfast, conversation, quick fishing trip, lunch, and then closing ceremonies. So there's not that many conversations, Mm -hmm. but it's kind of to get you to open up, think about uh, your experience, think about uh, your relationship with uh, your support group and such. And just, you know, kind of help you get through it. And then most of the time we have a lot of of variants. We have some people that are going through chemo and some people have been cancer free for years. So they can kind of tell them their experience. I mean, technology's changed, changing so much. So it's kind of apples and oranges if they're too far apart. But still, you know, it was a rough time in your life that you can share. So that's that's kind of it. We catch, I mean, uh, the White and North Fork are pretty generous. Generally, I don't think yeah. we've gotten skunks, so uh, <laughs> we felt you can always catch some fish over there. Yeah, we always yeah. catch fish. Yeah, I've uh, I've spent a little bit of time on on the White, and it is an absolutely great fishery. Um, although I've never waded or or bank fished from there, I've always been on a boat, but. Um, there's definitely some fish to be caught out there. So. Yeah, there's a few. Yeah, just a couple of them. <laughs> Worth it. Maybe, maybe even some world records have been caught out there, huh? <laughs> there's a few of those too. Yeah, so it's definitely a good fishery. And and you touched a little bit on the fact that uh, there's casting lessons if there's a lot of rookies. So do y'all have very many people coming through that have never fly fished before or aren't very experienced? I'd say at least probably 80% are, are have never touched a fly rod in their life. I see. That's awesome. So that's yeah. probably another thing that might discourage people is I don't know how to fly fish. Why would I go to that? You know? So maybe that's one thing that, you know, that they're obviously going to teach you guys how to, how to fish if, if that's something you're worried about. So, yeah. All right. It's a easy way to test the waters. Cause we provide the rods, the waders, flies, everything. You just need to show up mm-hmm. and then you have a, basically a guide for a, a day and a half to, teach you everything yeah that is awesome so uh yeah and we've had guys you know put the lawn chair out in the river and uh have them fish we generally want them to you know cast for themselves but we've had some guys that where the river buddy cast for them hand them the rod and then they set the hook and reel them in it all just all depends what what needs to happen to make the best of the day right but uh yeah that's awesome so you talked a little bit about the timeline and i know that uh in specific that real recovery does this ceremony called the vest ceremony to start it off yes so um is that something uh, you just say yeah so i'm assuming that y'all are doing that as well um what is what do y'all get from that so i know that a lot of people get emotional seeing all the other men that have come through this and then they're signing their names on these same vests and wearing them how, what are y'all guys as the ones that coordinate this whole thing? What are y'all's feelings on that? It, it's one of the most touching of, uh, parts of the event. Um, I've been blessed to be at every retreat from the inception to the to current. Oh, and wow. some capacity, either as a river buddy or a, a coordinator or some, some aspect. There's me and one other person, Greg Dodds, the guy out of Oklahoma that have been to all retreats. And we see the legacy of those guys that have went behind before them that are no longer with us are still there. Yeah, it's, and and that that carries a lot with the guys knowing that someone went through what they're going through before them, and they can have that little piece that they're, they're after everything's said and done, their legacy will continue on as well through the mm-hmm. vest ceremony. That is awesome. So, have y'all had as many people to come through yet to where you have to retire any vest or anything like that? Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They gave me one. It's it's a size small, so it's a little hard to put on at the at our fundraisers but mm-hmm. yeah they'll 
they'll retire one and they give it to retreats to to use as fundraiser tools. I see. But yeah, it's pretty it's pretty full. There'll be names everywhere on that vest. Yeah, and where they're at in the year. Yeah. So really? you you sign your name, uh, your retreat. So ours would be flicking Arkansas and the date. And then if you want to write a message, you can. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But so you'll get a vest that, you know, has been to Michigan, been to California, Montana. Yeah. It's been all over because uh, there's only really two national people making the thing run. There's Shiloh that you spoke to and she's in Dallas. Mm-hmm. So she coordinates all the lists, who's going to the retreat, and they got their doctor uh, release in and all that. And then she boxes up all the waiters, depending on what sizes and uh, the retreat needs. And then you put UPS them out to the, the lodge or wherever the retreat's happening. So mm-hmm. she does all the coordination. And then we have a board member uh, Stan up in uh, Massachusetts that kind of handles logistics of it. Yeah. I see. Kind of the face of the thing. So we have a uh, real small overhead. So that's kind of the difference between us and casting for recovery. They have quite a huge staff. So that's why you see ads in, you know, the fly fishing magazines and a lot more social media. We're more, uh, they rely more on the states to kind of push state coordinators to push all that within the state. That makes sense. And, and then you don't, it's uh less money to put on the retreat because you're not paying yeah. for that overhead. So it's a catch 22. Everything yeah. comes down to you got to pay for it. Right. That definitely makes sense. So how many, is it, is real recovery in every state or are there a certain amount of, uh, are you no, no. Sure? I'd have to look. I can look I, at the. I believe it's thirty six. Last I heard, I don't know if that's yeah. exactly accurate. But I thought it was thirty six. That number six in my head for some reason. Okay. But now we're in. We're overseas, so we're in uh, uh, the UK. I think is this is the first year for that. Yeah, in New oh, Zealand, and then Australia and New Zealand. That's yeah. awesome. And then they go to Columbia or uh, British Columbia this year, Bob, or is that next? Uh, maybe next year. I don't okay, see next, them. Yeah, but but mainly. Mainly the fly fishing states, so yeah. Colorado, uh, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Ohio, Idaho, Oregon, let's see Wisconsin, Oklahoma. Of course, your old old uh, state. It's not really you got one trout river, Texas, but Texas, yeah. You know, Texas has to be the biggest. They got six <laughs> retreats just themselves. Oh wow! Yeah. Most states, most states like us in Missouri, just have one. Mm-hmm. Uh, most We've had just four, but yeah, but uh, yeah, nothing, nothing like Texas and three different sites. No, right, yeah, but yeah, you talk about the fly fishing states. Actually, the person that went that established real recovery went to a, a retreat in an Ill, in Illinois for warm water. So really? there are some some non traditional. Texas is all uh, fishing for bass. Yeah. yeah. It's even, not just even, trout. Is what I'm trying yeah, to say. There's, there's other. Yeah, I, I think see. Louisiana used to have one. I don't see them. I don't anymore. think they're on there anymore. Um. Yeah. So the whole East Coast is kind of missing out. I think Maine. Maine has a retreat. Yeah, I believe Maine. But as far as you know, the Carolinas or Florida or Alabama, Mississippi. Florida has had one in the past, but I don't know if they still have one currently or not. We, yeah. I feel like some of those states would be difficult because the draw for the fly fishing in those is a lot of flood tides and out yeah. on the flats and stuff like that. So I feel like that'd be harder to coordinate a retreat around. Yeah. Yeah. We, we thought about boats because some years, you know, both rivers are full generation. Mm-hmm. But it just adds another huge logistics level yeah. of coordinating everything, making sure it's safe. Yeah, everyone finishes that time because now we've we've had some hardcore fishermen sign up and and they don't want to come back for lunch. They'd rather <laughs> just skip dinner. 
you know, kind of have to reel them in. Otherwise, yeah. they'd be out there dust to dawn. I see. Fishing. See, that's probably how I would be if I was a participant. I I just love fishing and I get lost in time. And that's something to be said about fly fishing in general, though, is, you know, you touched on it briefly earlier about how therapeutic it can be and how you're focusing just enough to get your mind off of other stuff, but not enough to get a headache. And it's just, I don't know how else to explain it other than it's artistic. You have to pay attention to what you're doing, but it's just so peaceful, so relaxing. And there's, you know, obviously people know that it can be therapeutic. They've made movies about it and everything like that. Uh, whether it be, you know, in this case for cancer or for PTSD or, you know, stuff like that. There's a lot of benefits to fly fishing. So um, I, I could definitely see how someone would want to stay out on the river all day and skip lunch, skip dinner. <laughs> oh, it, it was a good day. Like last year we had a, a record day and mm-hmm. we had to literally drag them off the river. Every <laughs> single one of them. No one was tired. No one wanted to leave the river. That they would awesome. still be there today if they could be. <laughs> it was just one of those special days where everything came together. Yeah. And uh, beautiful weather. We, we've we been very blessed in October. Arkansas in October is gorgeous. It is. I love it. I mean, late October, you have the leaves popping. You have the change of season. And, and usually the fish are really cooperative. Yeah. And I mean, the weather, you know, and it can be cold. We've had snow flurries before. We've had tornadoes. We've had everything. Yeah. But. That's Arkansas weather for you. Yeah, it's so temperamental, especially up in the Ozarks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I'm I'm at a spot here in Hot Springs to where we kind of get a little bit of that as well because we I'm at the foot end of the Washita Mountain yep. Range, and so sometimes you know you'll get it, sometimes you won't, but it'll be you know 30 minutes. You're out there, sunshine, no rain, and the next thing you know, you got tornado coming through or it's sure. a heavy downpour. So, or in the winter times, you'll just randomly get 18 inches but, of snow. Where'd that come from? <laughs> overall, we've been blessed over the, uh, how many years we've done this. I can't remember the top of my head. Um, so we've had good weather most every year. We haven't had any complete rain outs. We've had one, I think, Bob, we had one event that we, we had to, we had thunderstorms. Yeah, in the I think one day, go out. one day. Yeah. But we've been we very had, blessed. That's awesome. Yeah. And then we had a real cold day and yeah. the group kind of got together and said, I think most were still on chemo and they said, yeah, we can't, Yeah, we can't cut it in 40 degree weather. So we stayed in. So we have some plan B and C. We can do some fly tying. We've done stations where we show them how to rig a rod. So do all the knots and then Mm -hmm. some fly tying kind of go over all the equipment. If you're interested in getting fly fishing and a guy work at a, fly shop so he knew all the pricing and kind of went through all the different grades of fly rods yeah from your kits and the imports to u.s made to custom kind of kind of let them know right. like any other sport it's just whatever your budget is yeah they they're more than willing to take your money if you got a lot of money ain't that sure. true <laughs> they sell you some high-end <laughs> stuff yeah but uh yeah so yeah the Kind of how it started, uh, uh, casting for recovery was first, the women. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's more, that's strictly breast cancer. And theirs was more uh, exercising that breast muscle because the casting motion helps with that. I see. Because just uh, Toby's wife is mm-hmm. heavily involved in casting for recoveries. So just to show you the difference, uh, they set their date. They open it up on the website. We're taking names. Here in Arkansas, you can only be from Arkansas and Oklahoma. They say we have room for 12. Within 48 hours, they have 50 women sign up. Oh, wow. And they got to run a, a raffle to figure out which 12 women get to go. Or, you know, they do a little internal lottery. Mm-hmm. To be fair, to pick. Well, I think national. I'm not sure how that. that, I think national. Yeah. But anyway, they got way more than they can serve. Absolutely. And we will do this podcast. Hopefully, we'll get one guy out of it or a lot. (laughs) Yeah. Generally, it's about we do one event, we get one person, or we do like Toby, his brother. We do a lot of arm twisting. We hear, "Hey, I heard your uncle's, you know, sister." 
aunt that would be. But anyway, this relative got diagnosed. Go tell him to sign up. So yeah. we do a lot of arm twisting. I see. Um, we really have to work to get uh, guys to sign up. So, yeah. So uh, it started out in Colorado. Mm -hmm. uh, group of guys that fished together. One of them developed brain cancer. And they started, you know, fishing kind of the to take his mind off things just didn't even really think of it they're just fishing mm -hmm. and uh and then one day he said you know he just flat out said it you know when i'm with you guys on the river i forget about everything i'm going through and then they kind of said well hey maybe we should start something up this seems seems like a good idea and then they kind of built the group from there and then stan worked for casting for recovery and came over and kind of got the logistics and and everything rolling. And then how it started in Arkansas was uh, Ken Richards, and he was a fly fishing guide and I think worked at the Walmart Photo Lab. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was the president of our local fly fishing club, Tight Lines. Mm -hmm. And then he developed uh, throat cancer, mm -hmm. and he didn't dip or. Chew or anything. Never smoked a cigarette in life, yeah. Yeah, you know, just unlucky. Developed stage, I think stage four. Stage four uh, it was, thro yeah. Throat cancer. And his wife, you know, did the research, found out about real recovery. And back then, the closest one was on the Indiana-Kentucky mm -hmm. border. So he went all the way up there to a retreat and then came back. And uh, we need, you know, say, hey, guys, we need to bring this to... Arkansas. Well, there's a part of that too. Uh, 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 if you're familiar with the fly tying shows around the area, you had the style bug round up, small mouth rendezvous. Mm -hmm. One of the, my best friends, Charlie Bonner, also developed stomach, he developed stomach cancer about that same time. Him and Ken had become friends, and Charlie actually went to the Colorado retreat, their very first one. I see. And those two got together and were the driving force behind Real Recovery coming to Arkansas. Um, I see. Unfortunately, Charlie passed away right before our first retreat. Mm -hmm. um, so we dedicated. It was a pretty emotional. And, and, and to show you the type of camaraderie we have, last year we had guys from the very first retreat actually come to camp and hang out with us because they still have the good memories of that 10, 20 years, how long it was. I think it was 2010, 15 years ago, 14 years ago. They wow. still remember it and, and want to be a part of it to this day. Um, but so yeah, it's, it's been a, a driving force is the camaraderie that comes out of it. I mean, we've never had somebody say I had a bad time that, I, that yeah. I'm aware of. Everyone that's ever came has loved it. Yeah. that's amazing. Especially for yeah. people that are going through stuff like to even still want to come back and be a part of it. You know, you would think that, you know, going through something like that and being vulnerable as a man that kind of don't want to experience that again, but knowing that other people are, you know, still coming to be river buddies or fishing buddies or, you know, coming 14 years later to, to another retreat. Um, just, just to hang out. Speaks volumes. Yeah. That that's, that's amazing. Cause he said, we're, you know, we're brothers now. So it, it's, yeah. And, and that's the great thing about our group is we are like brothers. We may fight and squabble, but, but at the end of the day, we're like brothers. And that's, yeah. that's what makes it very special. A lot of the guys from the first retreat are still around today they really? may have missed a retreat here or there but they, they're still a part of it yeah all these years later that's amazing so how many people do you think that learn how to fly fish due to these retreats actually pick up fly fishing outside of it i'd say what bob 70 percent, 60 percent depending on their health yeah i'm not sure i mean nate Nate, uh, he f dabbled in it before the retreat, but then he just went, he went home. Home. Really? And, then, <laughs> and then, and then, you know, he became so comfortable. He didn't, he started playing the C card, you know, next thing I see is, uh, posts of him on social media. He's up in Michigan chasing the carp on the great lakes. And I was like, <laughs> you know, how'd you manage that? Oh, I just called him up and told him how i was and they said come on up so then and then you know he had to go to new orleans for some surgery and he's out red fishing and so yeah 
some guys uh, take to it just like anything. Some, you know, it's a one-time deal, but I think they all take something away. Uh, and each group's different. This last group was pretty heavy, and then you've had groups that are, you know, you wouldn't even tell it's a, a group of cancer guys. You think it was just some group of guys that got together to spend a couple of days drinking beer and fly fishing. They're so loose and everything. So it just really changes by, by who shows up. Yeah. And we kind of go with the flow. We got certain rules, you know, safety protocols and stuff, mm -hmm. but we're pretty flexible on, on how, how things go. That makes sense. So we talked very briefly on courageous conversations. So what is the format of that? Is that something where there's somebody in there that basically leads these conversations or is it kind of just let them speak about what their experience is or how does that work? Yeah. No, there's a, you know, generally a licensed uh, psychologist or, or we call them a facilitator. Okay. And they kind of have a, a guideline to, to go by. Um, but like I said, you know, the, the first night name and, and cancer, and then they'll, I don't want to give it away, but they'll progressively get, uh, deeper and more I see. Uh, personal, but again, you can pass, but generally, you know, you go around the room. So it's generally just one question. So you, so you'll have your conversation in bre at breakfast time at, or what, well, let's say, uh, after the first dinner, they'll say, you know, your name and your cancer. And generally guys will t say more than, you know, the type of cancer. They'll say, you know, what stage they are or in it and all that. Mm -hmm. And then some guys really open up and some are, you know, naming, naming this on to the next. But then at the end of that, the facilitators say, okay, next, uh, next time we get together, this is going to be the question. And I got want you guys to think about it. So then they got all night to sleep on it. And then in the morning, you know, they'll ask them that question and then they'll discuss it. And it kind of builds throughout the retreat is kind of how the courageous, the conversations go. I so see. it's kind of a, you know, the, since they're professionals, you know, there's, yeah, there's a, an outline of what they're supposed to cover, but they can pretty quickly establish you know, is this a real heavy group that's, mm -hmm. you know, all currently going through treatment or is these guys that, you know, it's way in their past. So they're kind of, you know, not, you know, as emotional. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the role of the facility. Ours, our guy is very good. He's very, uh, you know, can keep, keep people on track. You know, some of the, Rules are, you know, don't talk when the other guy's talking. Uh, don't, you know, start giving recommendations. You know, oh, you should have done that. You should have done this. Mm -hmm. You know, t toughen up or whatever. You know, yeah. let I let see. them say their piece and and uh, just uh, listen. So that's kind of, you know, he's a referee also. That you know, Sam, our facilitator is he does that effortlessly, you know, he, he can have, you know, just say, oh, let's let him speak and he can control the group really well and, and let the guys uh, say their piece. I see. And then he doesn't, doesn't push them, you know, it's just, it's just kind of let things flow. So that's kind of how it, how it works. I mean, it's, it's a lot of, you know, since men hold things so tight, it's a lot about, you know, if your caregiver was here, so your spouse, sister, whoever took care of you, brother, um, you know, what would you say that you never said if they were here? You know, that's towards the end. You kind of build up to that. That's not yeah. an easy thing to say right off. But, you know, it's just kind of getting them to think. If they get them out of their shell. So, and then some guys, you know, have no shell. <laughs> They're like, yeah, <laughs> you know, it's no big deal. 
told my wife everything, you know, pastor, whole congregation knows all about me, you know, no secrets. And then you have guys that are like, well, like my father, I, he had prostate cancer. I didn't know till like we came next year on vacation. Oh yeah. He had surgery six months ago. No big deal. Oh, wow. Never didn't want to talk about it again. So, yeah. you know, it's just kind of those extremes and that's, that's what the facilitator's for. And that's kind of, besides getting out in the river, that's part of the healing too, is, is just to get you to think about uh, your relationships, you know, yeah. don't let cancer tear apart uh, your family relations or your friends relations. Absolutely. Because of, uh, something you didn't ask for yeah that definitely makes sense and and i didn't know that the uh, facilitators were um psychologists and stuff like that so that that's another thing that's beneficial you know that i can imagine having an open conversation with like-minded men with the professional there as well yeah so um but that that's also one thing that i think is very therapeutic and and not only just in this sense but just openly communicating about you know issues or ailments or stuff like that is just freeing for the soul and, and can help in so many other ways. And so the fact that you're normalizing it there in this setting with a professional, with other people that are, have been, or are currently going through the same thing that you're going through, I can see how that could be extremely therapeutic and, and helpful for somebody that's going through times like that in their life. So, um, yeah, that's just, I don't know. I never, I, I guess I never thought about the logistics of it and how the courageous conversations would have actually worked, but seems like a very uh, open and beneficial part of the retreat. Yeah. And then the river buddies um, will develop a good relation. Some are, you know, and it, it's the whole spectrum again. Some are just put me on fish. Mm -hmm. You know, they think an excellent fishing buddy is, you know, you, you got me to catch X amount of fish. And then others, one of my favorite pictures is, uh, so we can have uh, uh, women uh, river buddies, you know, if they're capable of, of tying on flies and getting them on fish. But uh, one of my favorite pictures is uh, uh, Penny sitting next to the guy just on shore on a log and they're just talking, you know, because some, mm -hmm. you know, if they're going through chemo, a full day of fishing is a lot. Yeah. So they need to take breaks and that's one of the things we cover with the river buddies because you know they show up and they're all amped my guy's gonna catch a ton of fish and we gotta remind them that hey participant will dictate you know the timeline if they need to go to shore and rest then you're gonna let them rest you know don't be out there you know toby's caught five more fish than us we gotta push through you know don't rant don't kill your participant right but uh so the participant sets the pace you know so we've had guys i mean our last guy he was a river buddy and he just passed away and he had uh lung cancer and he's out there chain smoking still mm -hmm. killing us and uh you know he'd make one cast and then have to rest for five minutes and then catch a fish and then it's that put him down for about 20 minutes because he just didn't have the lung power anymore yeah and uh so it just depends uh on so the river but and we're lucky you know we have our core so they've got 10 12 years of experience dealing with these guys so they can they can look at them and uh and we have a a nurse uh on on the facility, she's an ex oncology nurse, so we we're blessed with that. So she knows what medications there are. Each meal, we remind them to take their medication because uh, uh, you know I've luckily have never experienced, but chemo, you can be in a fog and and uh, forget your medication. So yeah, we remind them, and she's there, so she's right on site where they're sleeping, and uh, so if they need anything. And kind of watch, kind of make sure they're they're not overdoing it. 
Right, right. But I'm touching Bob's point. The best day I ever had was just sitting, talk a, a gentleman. I was helping another everybody who was kind of having a rough day. He was struggling a little bit. And we sat and talked. And the participant said, this is the best I've ever had. He caught two fish. He just wanted to just be out there and just to talk to us. He, he loved the bond more than the fishing. Mm-hmm. And so and the fishing is a hook to get the guys there. It's not what the retreat's actually about. Yeah. That's just the hook to get them there. The fishing is fun and important, but the camaraderie is what really, and the brotherhood that you come out of it with is the most important thing. Yeah. And that's one thing that I've heard from some other people that I know that have been fishing buddies at other retreats, that some of these bonds that they make are lifelong, you know? Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, there are some participants that do pass away shortly yep. after the retreats. Um, but there's also some that are in recovery for years to come, even decades to come. And those friendships that were made at these retreats have been lifelong. And, uh, so if somebody were to want to be a fishing buddy, what's the process of that? So you can, you'll go online to realrecovery.org and there's a link to volunteer. Okay. And then you pick which retreat. So depending on where you live, you'd pick that retreat. And then uh, it would go to Shiloh in Dallas. And then she'll uh, send it on to me. And then I gave you a phone call and uh, and go from there. Or I'll give you a phone call. Bob will contact me and say, yeah. hey, so what's so We were back. You contact them. I yeah. see. That makes sense. And is it a similar process for somebody that wants to be a participant as well? Yeah. Yeah, they'll go to the same website, sign up for uh, to be a participant. They'll pick which retreat. Um, so they, they'll want you to go to the first one, but um, like Missouri, let me look. I think they're in March. They're early in the year. Yeah. And that's their one and only retreat. So if someone's in Missouri, and since we're right on, you know, flipping's right on the, the border, Mm-hmm. They can say, "Hey, I want to go to the Arkansas one in October. I missed yeah. missed the one in uh, in uh, earlier in the year. So yeah, April. Um, so they can do that. We don't re- like I said earlier. We don't restrict them from uh, picking and choosing. Now they can't pick Australia or New Zealand, even if they can afford to fly over there. <laughs> they right. have to say, you yeah, that's the right here. But uh, we tried. <laughs> but I think, yeah." You could almost knock off your bucket list. Well, you can only attend them once, but you know, most most retreats are struggling, even Montana and stuff to yeah. fill out. You would think people wouldn't want to go up there, but um yeah. And the White River's a big draw. But uh yeah. yeah. So logistically, what's what's easiest for you, retreat to attend, that's the one you sign up for. Mm-hmm. And then again, uh, same path that goes to Shiloh comes to me and then uh, I'll, I'll put you on the list. I'll give you a call pretty much right away uh, to welcome them. And then about a month ahead, I'll, I'll start ch- checking with Shiloh to make sure they have their medical releases done. Thank God yeah. we don't have to mess with uh, COVID. You know, we had to get make sure they had their COVID shots and all. Wow. Um, so we don't have to deal with that anymore. But uh um, yeah, and then they're on the list, and then about you know, and then a couple of days, make sure they didn't forget. Like we had that one guy. Oh shoot, I bought tickets to go to Hawaii. Yeah. I forgot about the retreat, but yeah, uh, happened. Um, yeah, and that and that and for some reason, we usually have about two a retreat of just flat out no shows. Yeah, so I think uh, I don't know, maybe the. The spouse, you know, really twisted their arm to get them to sign up, and they kind of stayed quiet and let it slide by, and and didn't have to go. Right. So I don't know, but uh, yeah, that's kind of disappointing. But mm-hmm. only a couple years have we had people on the waiting list where that really affected someone. Yeah. You know? So we're we're really that's our biggest struggle is uh, uh, getting getting things we need. We need to get back, I guess, really connected with the oncology centers mm-hmm. and somehow getting our literature in front of them. I mean, the yeah. podcasts uh, help and such, and 
we have flyers and the fly shop and quite a few river buddies are guides. So I'm constantly telling them, Hey, if you got a guy in the boat and he starts talking about cancer, then hit him up. And right. Say, hey, here's a free, free fly fishing trip. <laughs> Room Absolutely. and board for two nights. Just try to whatever, whatever takes it. I mean, the best I used to work for Walmart and they, uh, I think they still have the program it might be a different name now, but they called it volunteering always pays. BAP. Mm-hmm. And if you volunteered for an organization that you know, Walmart said that's a, a true organization, uh, they'll, for every 25 hours, I think they donate $250. And then the managers and, and higher ups have more money as far as their department. They can give out thousands of dollars to uh, charities. So what they do is once a year, they would bring in all the 501Cs into the cafeteria and uh, you kind of say, here's volunteer opportunities. And a lot of it's team building too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like uh, Habitat for Humanity. Mm-hmm. That's easy to get your team of 20 people to go paint a house for a day. Yeah. And then that's, you know, eight hours of 20 people. Uh, and, you know, it adds up quick and you write a big mm-hmm. check to Habitat. So. Yeah, long story short, uh, I represented Real Recovery. I had a table there, took my lunch hour off and and uh, manned the table. And then uh, just so happened uh, a cancer group, uh, but she also worked at Highland Oncology as the marketing manager. And she just sent out one email blurb and we had 20 guys show up. That's the oh. year we had two retreats because... Yeah. I mean, her little email. Now, I was a little concerned that they thought it was a Highland Oncology sanction yeah. outing and not <laughs> not really real recovery. But, but yeah. yeah, so that connection, and then she moved on. So we had a good connection for a couple of years. But it's, it's really, that's uh, by far our hardest work. Fundraising, uh, uh, Ken Richards, his initial fundraiser was, I'm going to float the whole Buffalo River yep. in my drift boat. And he did it uh, like a fun run or whatever, mm-hmm. where you could pay by the mile or give him a lump sum. I see. And what's the Buffalo? A hundred and something miles. So if you paid a dollar a mile. 186. You're, you're, sound yeah, right. you're almost paying $200 if you just say, oh, yeah, I'll just give you a dollar a mile. Not thinking how long the Buffalo is. Right. And then uh, he did it in his high drift boat. The Rangers didn't want to let him go because it was at flood stage, but that was, you know, that was probably best for a drip boat because right. nice and easy for him to make the whole float. And then, then he, uh, he the whole Arkansas River, but just yeah, he tried the whole it. Arkansas River, but there's a lot of bigger boats on the Arkansas. And then a storm came up, and he went through a couple locks, yeah, and mm-hmm. such. But then a storm came up, and it was blowing him backwards. He was oh, wow. losing. You know, the miles he made, he was quickly going the wrong way, getting blown. So he had to call that quits. But he made it, you know, he started at the Oklahoma border and made it a, a more than halfway. Oh, wow. That is crazy. So, and then uh, I started doing a a white bass tournament. I think I did that for three years mm-hmm. on uh, down by Goshen, where the white bass run out of the beaver. Yeah. But that was always... It's hard to predict a date, you mm-hmm. know, a year in advance and expect the white bass to be there yeah. and the river not to be in the trees. So then we finally, well, you know, Nate and I start bouncing around. And the F3T was coming to Fayetteville regularly as a, one of their stops. Mm-hmm. And they would let us get up in front of people and, and do a quick auction and talk about real recovery. And then we just decided to go out there and look and see if there was another film tour. And there's the IF4 that's out of Canada. Mm-hmm. And we started hosting that. So we didn't step on F3T's toes. We started doing our the different film. Mm-hmm. And that, that way, rain or shine, we can have the event. So we have... Uh, live and silent auctions, live auction during intermission. And that's how we uh, uh, raise our money. And then we have a few other donors. So it's pretty easy 
there's a lot of money in Northwest Arkansas. So we don't have to put that much effort into raising money. And with the, the greens, uh, donating room and board, Mm -hmm. we don't have to raise that much money. Yeah. And, and river buddies, uh, we have our core group and then, uh, being a guide for two days is it's pretty easy to get people to step up and do that. Yeah. And we're unique. Not only do the greens give us room and board now, but they live about a mile away and they have about what five or 10 acres. Somewhere in that area. And they let us basically camp in our backyard. So if you look one way and see our tents, it looks like we're camping in the woods and really roughing it. And if you look the other way, you see the swimming pool in the house and <laughs> you know, the gazebo with the barbecue pit. So, yeah. So we got, you know, we use their shower and stuff. I so see. they, they just open up their house. I and, see. and now starting last year, since fly fishing is kind of really a small group, uh, casting for recovery only fishes a half day and they, they do their retreat Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and they started to use cedarwood also. So we bumped them together. So casting for recovery is Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and they fish, they need volunteers on Sunday. So a lot of our guys come in actually Friday to scout, yeah, really fish on their own mm-hmm. and stay at the greens. And then they volunteer for casting for recovery Sunday morning. And then Monday morning, they help with a little setup and then free to fish. So they do more scouting and then they are river buddies for us Tuesday, Wednesday. And they tip so this day really, a couple days after that. Yeah. So that really, if, if they take, have to take vacation from work, that really, you know, they get a lot of fishing in helping two charities. It really makes it efficient. Yeah. So we couldn't be, you know, the green, the green cedarwood is just a godsend for what they do. So. Yeah. So it all comes down to, you know, some people say get with, tight with the oncology nurses because they're the ones who are sitting with the patients yeah. all day long. The doctors, they're kind of, you know, okay, we're going to try this, that, and then they're off, off. They don't spend as much time. So the real connection is the nurses and I guess the marketing, the people that uh, send out the flyers and, uh, stay in touch with them after they've uh, had their treatments and such is the people we meet and, and the spouses. Mm -hmm. I don't know if their church spouse support or, or what, but when you convince uh, the woman in their life that it's good for them, they make it happen. Yeah. (laughs) So dealing with the man one-on-one Man, it's like thirty percent chance. Yeah, that you're dealing with the the woman in their life. Oops, and you're, you're batting nineties. You're up in the nineties. <laughs> so yeah, right. I did. A, we had a table at the trout banquet, mm-hmm. and uh, Mrs. A- Ackerman, the Ackerman Access on the North Fork, Boots named Ackerman, after yeah. her husband. Yeah, she said, "I got a friend," and I go, "Okay." And she goes, well, just sign him up. And I go, oh, I kind of like, <laughs> you know, him to do it himself. But yeah, boom. Two days later, he signed up. So, really? you know, that's, yeah. So that's, so that's the sure. strategy is to get the women on board first. Yeah. So I'm not sure how you do that. <laughs> right. Well, if there's anybody listening to this podcast and or watching this podcast, if you know of any man that has cancer or has had cancer, tell them to sign up. They will not regret it. They'll enjoy it. They get to fish on a world-renowned trout fishery here in Arkansas in the Ozarks. It's gorgeous. <laughs> so what was that website? It's realrecovery.org, right? Yes, .org. And it's real like a fishing reel. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I'll make sure I put the link in the description as well. Um, so if anybody knows of anybody that you think could benefit from this, absolutely tell them to go to realrecovery.org. Link will be in the, in the description. How do people support? So you talked about like doing fundraisers and stuff like that. Is there another way that somebody just remotely can donate or? Yeah, they, again, they can go to the website and uh, yeah, there's a link. They can donate fixed amounts or, or doing their amount. 
And then if they don't put any state, then it just goes to the national, you know, spread among everyone. If they want to, you know, just go to Arkansas, then you can just put a little note. I want my money to go to Arkansas. I want my money to go to Texas. I see. You can specify where you want it, want it to go. Awesome. I mean, just like any charity, you can you can probably turn it on and say, "I want to give a hundred dollars every year." Auto pay. I don't. I'm not sure. If we also have fundraising. Way. We also have fundraising events like uh, was it December seventh, Bob? We decided on for our show in Salem. Yeah, we haven't locked that in, but there's another film film uh, package that they offered let us show so we're trying to coordinate that awesome. and uh, f3t stopped uh coming on their own i think they've they've the drake magazine no longer owns that and it's gone through a couple different owners so fayetteville is not on one of the uh corporate stops and uh uh october 17th uh, i think van winkle adventures is the name of his outfit but anyway he's he's showing it here in fayetteville at theater square and uh he's gonna divvy up the proceeds between the mayfly project which is fly fishing for uh uh, foster kids so that one's a little unique it it uh are you know most of them are one-time deals Mm -hmm. the two cancer ones that one they work with the foster kids all the way up from uh Tying the knots, learning the bugs, you know, going in the stream and seining and then uh, fly tying what they found in the creek. And then eventually uh, they get donated rods and packs. And basically when they're done at the end of the year, they're full fledged fly fisher and uh, ready to go on their own. So and then Trout Unlimited. So those will be the three charities real recovery out of this one. I and see. Then he's he's kind of he's still kind of feeling his way on on uh, hosting events. He wants to get even bigger, and Fayetteville's trying to talk him into bigger. But yeah, uh, getting the volunteer help is a also a limiting factor too. Right, I can imagine. But yeah, and uh, we've been pretty bad at. We just been using volunteers mainly as river buddies, but we can always use help. Uh, yeah, knocking on the doors of the uh, cancer, you know, support groups. Mm-hmm. So there's the facilities, you know, Highlands Oncology, and that's the big one up here. And then, uh, but there's uh, uh, was it Hope Cancer? There's some support groups out there that. Uh, you know, people can talk to them and see. I'd um, be more than happy to email flyers. And I used to have a huge wordy one and then uh, kind of followed uh, uh, Missouri. And they said, no, just make it sh- straight to the point and put mm-hmm. big, bold letters, free fly fishing retreat. <laughs> and then I said in the fine print, must be older than 21. Yeah. Touched by cancer and mail. But. And then uh, you qualify. So, yeah, just getting the word out. Um, and, uh, and uh, yeah, if you have extra money, feel, yeah, if it's a cause that you feel is worthwhile, you can uh, donate on the website. If you want it to come to us, just say Arkansas. But And I think on there, if you had someone pass from uh, cancer, you can do honor of and and that such stuff um but yeah and i mean we'd love to have multiple retreats i always say arkansas has a very little brother syndrome to texas and uh you know they have six retreats we're barely filling one so yeah if we want to get in a competition we need to step up our game yeah well, any way so, that I can help, other than just putting out this podcast, but if there's any other stuff that, that I can do to help y'all out, I mean, I'm more than happy to help out in any way that I can. I was hoping to make it up that, this retreat to volunteer this this go around, but I was speaking with Toby, I guess, about a month ago, and yeah, I just, I, I'm not able to make it work this year, unfortunately, but um, yeah, hopefully I'll be able to go out and maybe be a fishing buddy and help out with some, you know, we'd PR love to have you. Whatever. I'd love to be a part of it, so. 
but yeah, if there's anything that y'all ever need, just don't hesitate to reach out and uh, let me know. And us, me personally, and us as a podcast, would will do anything that we can to help y'all out. We appreciate that. I was telling. Yeah, we appreciate it. Yeah, we were also saying on our major, we have a major fundraiser. Our biggest of the year is usually in March, February time frame. But people that want to give to Real Recovery at that event, we'll have stuff for auction, mm-hmm. guide trips, uh, artwork. Uh, we'll have rods for different games, so people can give to Real Recovery and still walk out with something as well. Yeah. So, and That's we'll awesome. we'll be sure to post. We'll get you once we have the dates locked in. We'll be sure to get it to you. And, Awesome. Yeah. Let me know yeah. and I'll, I'll help out any way that I can. It's a fun yeah. event. We have, it grows every year. We've yeah. had, there's just something about benefit year. events like that, that are just, everybody's in good spirits for the most part. And, uh, yeah. you know, it, it's partially stressful when you're, when you have a goal to reach, but other than that, everybody else is in a good mood, having a good time yeah. and in a giving mood. So benefit parties and stuff like that are always fun. But yes, sir. Well, I appreciate y'all hopping on. We're getting kind of close to our limit here. So all right. Uh, Thanks for having is there, Hey, I appreciate y'all's time. Thank y'all for all the information. Is there anything else that y'all want to mention before we go ahead and get off here? Uh, can't think of anything. No, I think we covered yeah, that. Our retreat is October 21st, 22nd, 23rd. Mm-hmm. We have eight guys signed up. We have room for 12. Usually like to have a couple people. I mean, ideally, we could easily do 14 so if we had a couple in reserve and no one backed out then we can let those two guys come also Mm -hmm. so we have plenty of room and uh you know you can sign up the day before if you got your doctor on speed dial and get them to fax something in you know you could be driving and still talking to your doctor and as long as you get that approval that uh you're good to go so uh, don't think you've missed this year. There's still plenty of time to sign up. All right. Y'all hear that. Go to realrecovery.org if there's any interest at all and go do it. But for those of y'all that are watching and or listening, we appreciate y'all making it to the end and we'll catch y'all next time. This has been Wildlife Outdoors. Thanks for listening. Follow us on Facebook at Wildlife Outdoors and on Instagram at wild.life.outdoors. Let's go live life on the wild side.